Hello kids, welcome to our last fundamental needs presentation. And this is going to be on the last 20 years. You could call it the modern era, the I generation, the Anthropocene age, the internet era, the information age, the space age, the age of Aquarius, call it what you would like. But it's about the last 20 years. And you might've noticed right now, I am not in the bottom right hand corner because my PowerPoint is not behaving. So you're gonna to have to watch this one without my pretty face. Without any further ado though, let's get moving. Um, I noticed that there was a trend in a way a lot of these have changed our fundamental needs and it has to do with energy. In particular, the use of industrial energy. This is energy we use basically to run our factories, our cars, our boats, our planes, and it primarily uses fossil fuels. Fossil fuels would be petroleum, oil, gasoline. And when we burn these to collect the energy to run all these motors and things that we use, it creates a lot of pollution, a lot of smog. It's not pretty stuff. You don't want to breathe it. And it also creates a lot of carbon dioxide that is creating greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and really causing some chaos in our climate. So in the past while now, people are starting to go, you know, should we keep burning this? And there's one really big thing, one really important thing I want to stress with you guys. It's not a renewable resource. We have a limited amount of fossil fuels that we can use. And when we run out, we run out. So people are thinking, you know what, before we run out, we have to find other sources of energy that work. And that's what we're looking at right now. And one of the best sources that we can create easily and renewably is electricity. So we have things like wind turbines, hydroelectric dams, good old solar power. We can use all of these renewable sources to make electricity without creating any pollution at all. The production of the structures can, you know, can cause a little bit of pollution when you're making them. But once they're made, once they're spinning or water's running or the sun's shining, all they do is make electricity. And that's one of the ways we're going right now because it's a really good way to make power for us. So our fundamental needs we'll go over real quickly again is food, clothing, shelter, communication, transportation and defense. And I'll let you guys know right now, I'm not going in order. I'm going to go in a different order because some of them are much more exciting than others. And I've saved the best for last. Right off though, we're going to look at food. We're getting really good at making food, as you can see. And one of the big changes now, this is, you see traditional methods of making it here. Those are fields out there. That's all agriculture you see. But a lot of people start to move indoors. Why indoors? These massive greenhouses have a couple really big advantages. They still use the power of the sun so the plants can photosynthesize, but you can control the temperature. You can control the oxygen and carbon dioxide in the air. You can stop pests from getting in there. It's, it's like literally perfect growing conditions for these things. So they grow quickly, they grow nutritiously, and it's a really neat way to grow things. Here is another system on shelves, and there's one I've been in, I got a tour of, are these pepper plants that grow straight up, really tall pepper plants. And one of the coolest things they do is when they water them, the plants, of course, collect all the water they need, and then they collect what wasn't used, clean it, and use it again. Water that goes in the atmosphere is released by the plants. That is collected and used again. They reuse their water all the time. It's amazingly efficient. And this is a big move that agriculture is going to is indoors. Border control is pretty much the same as far as defense goes. I don't want to spend a lot of time in defense. I'm not going to talk about warfare, but I will talk about the fact that we still use things like drones now. We haven't had drones before. People are using drones to protect their borders. As you can see, the wall up above is pretty traditional and is a radar dish on the side. So we are expanding the ways that we surveil our borders, the way we look over them, but not much else has changed as far as that goes. And of course we have the good old border control here at the, whether you're driving through or at the airport, not much of that has changed, uh, not energy wise either. Uh, it's pretty still traditional. We just make, check people as they come across. Oh, a washing machine. Yeah, I looked at clothing. And, you know, clothing doesn't really focus too much on energy um, savings either, you, on T-shirts and things like that. But washing them does because washing machines and dryers use a lot of electricity and use a lot of power and cost a lot. So these days, when you try and wash something, a lot of machines give you a lot of options. And these options are made to help you save energy because you can choose, what if you have a small load? We've doing a big load. What if you have, you can look, heavy duty, bedding, bright whites, oxy sanitize, whatever that means, um, waterproof stuff, del delicates, all that kind of stuff. So you can change the way you're washing something and that can hopefully help you save some energy. 
Uh, a lot of the manufacturers are quite aware of this and they want to make sure they make stuff that doesn't waste a lot of water or waste a lot of electricity. And dryers are the same. Lots of options on dryers now. So again, if you want to do something small, do it for a short period of time. You can change how much heat it is. So yeah, these things are getting pretty good because people are aware of it. But what is the best dryer you can use? Yeah, just hang it up and let it dry. That's what I do with a lot of my towels. I hang them, well, I don't hang them outside, but I, bring, I hang them inside. Yeah, a lot of people use these things. They're great. It's nice and fresh in the breeze. They dry very quickly. So good old clotheslines are an awesome way to still dry your clothes and use absolutely no energy or electricity or pollution at all. It's totally great. Houses and shelters have come a long way. It costs money to run a house and electricity to run everything. So solar panels are being used a lot right now. As you can see, they kind of incorporate them onto the roofs because the roofs face in the sun. They collect energy from the sun and give that energy right to the house to use. So you can save a lot of money. And uh, that's a big trend that's going on right now, especially someplace like Texas, where you get a lot of sun. You face those things in the right direction. You can make a lot of electricity and run a lot of things without actually having to pay for it. They, they do it for you. You've got to pay for the, the panels, but then electricity you get from them is completely free. It comes from the sun. There's even people that use hydroelectric power to run their houses. This is a nice example. See, there's a lake that runs a, 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 a tunnel, a tunnel, a tube that runs down, and the pipe runs a turbine that runs electricity to those houses you see over there. This is not, of course, an actual picture, but it's an example of how people can do that too. Uh, they do not create any pollution. They do not do anything like that. It just runs perfectly from the water. As long as water is running, uh, they get electricity. It's a really neat way to uh, power a house. Some places, well, they recognize in the buildings that when the sun hits the roof, it bakes the building. This is true. This is why your house can get really warm mid-afternoon if you don't have air conditioning on because it's baking in the sun. They realize if they put plants all over their buildings, the plants absorb the energy of the sun and the buildings don't bake and they save money on air conditioning. Because believe me, kids, air conditioning uses a lot of electricity and it's very expensive. Now, I'm not telling everybody to fill their roofs with plants. But the building you see up here, that little triangle shaped one, saves a lot of money on air conditioning because those plants help keep it cool. So more buildings are actually looking at this. It's a pretty cool idea. And some of the great innovations have been happening in the past 20 years. Speaking of innovations, there's a company called Solar City who, has try who is trying to make your roof tiles, shingles, uh, solar power panels. So the actual shingle itself is solar powered panel and provides electricity to your house. They're still working on this. Hasn't been completely figured out yet, but they're working on it. Just like they're working on solar powered roads and solar powered sidewalks. So all these ideas are coming up. Are they working really well right now? No, nah, no, but you got to make one to make another that's better and another that's better and another that's better. That's going to be a trend of this presentation I'll be showing you. You got to start somewhere. That's for sure. Now we go on to uh, communication and communication I mentioned in the last presentation, the big thing was the printing press and books and we still have those. But I think you know where we're gonna be going with this. We used to communicate and still could using things like CB radios. They could travel the, uh, the citizen band radios. You could talk to other people on them. Good old telephones, of course. Walkie talkies worked great. Ham radios, oh, sorry. Ham radios worked very well too. And they're excellent to work with and they work very well, but we've had a few new technologies in the past 20 years that have changed things dramatically. That would be the internet. If you watch that video, you know what I'm talking about. This is literally a global game changer. With the birth of the internet, our communication went from a couple miles and maybe farther, you know, long distance of using telephones to now anyone can reach just about anyone in the world immediately through their little tiny smartphone. See at the bottom there, that's all you need now is a little tiny smartphone and you're on your way. And so this has changed everything. Communication is everywhere all the time now, thanks to the internet. You can get your weather forecasts. You can talk to anybody. You can get news reports. You can get sports cores. So you can see cool sciencey stuff. You can fix anything. You can watch music videos all in the palm of your hand. This in the history of the world was never, ever, ever possible before. Kids, you're in a good spot right now where you have these things in the palm of your hand. Don't let it distract you though, it can get very distracting. 
uh, use it you know, for the forces of good. It's, it's a pretty cool device. Transportation, we're gonna finish off with this one because I got a few things to say about that. We've talked about the internal combustion engine, which by far was the greatest thing to come to transportation uh, ever. It, it, internal combustion engine, they used gasoline in order to run it, and it worked great. They made it to make giant dump trucks and race cars and pickup trucks and little cars, and as long as you kept on pumping that fuel into it. But we've been learning now, yes, that burns up a lot of pollution because there are a lot of vehicles out there. So some are starting to go, okay, we got to do something better. we got to do something different. In time, eventually, we need a different way to do things. And the first thing I turn to, of course, solar power. Yes, solar-powered cars. And you're going to look at that and go, Mr. Fry, that's not, no, it's not a car. It's more like a bike with a shell around it, and the bike has a little motor on it, and the solar-powered cells are collecting electricity and putting that electricity into the motor, and it's running this little bicycle thing this guy's riding on. Uh, it worked. You got to start small though, and then you start thinking bigger. Got this car here that's covered in solar panels. That gets even better with this car over here. You can see the progress is being made. Now, here's the catch though solar power cells don't collect electricity really quickly, they, they collect it over time, and sometimes cars need power really fast. So, we're quickly learning that we cannot generate enough electricity from the solar panels to run a car constantly. Now, we're working on it, but it's not the most feasible option. But then they thought, well, what if we use an engine that runs electricity, like these ones did, but put a big battery in the car, a rechargeable battery? Now, that could help because it would just feed off of energy from the battery. There you go. Wow, look at that beast. Yes, that's one of the first electric cars out there. Didn't do well, uh, but it was a nice, they took a shot at it. And quick people realized, okay, well, you know, we're going to make these electric cars, but they got to be small because a smaller car is lighter. It uses less energy and we can run them longer on these batteries, these little engines. And people went, okay, maybe we can do that. Oh, before I go to the next one, though, can you think of what the original out of this world electric vehicles were? Yes, the Moon Rover car. Yes, that ran on electricity. You can bet there wasn't a a um, internal combustion engine on that thing. Uh, after a while, though, in the past 20 years or so, people have said, okay, we got to do something. These electric cars are definitely doable, but we've got to work on them. We've got to work on them hard. We've got to make them look good. And in the past 10 years, we've had Porsches making some now, Chevy's making some, I think that's Nissan or Kia off the side there. But one man came out. His name was Elon Musk. And he really, really set himself to this. He created a company you probably know called Tesla, uh, named after Nikolai Tesla. And he says, we're going to make the best looking, the most powerful electric vehicles. They don't have to be little and tiny and boxy. We're going to make them look like other cars. We're going to make them look better than other cars. And we're going to put them on powerful engines that you know people are like, oh, a little electric thing. No, no, they're going to look at these electric cars and go, wow. Look at that puppy. Not only did he do that, he was completely successful until people in these giant engine cars said, oh, we're going to challenge him. You, you, can't, you can't do better than us. So I introduce you to the Lamborghini, I believe it's called Aventor. Um, you'll probably correct me if I said that wrong. Uh, it is a $400,000, 730-horsepower beast. And along came... Uh, well, Tesla and Elon Musk, well, you know, we, we beat that electric vehicle. So they brought out the, the Tesla S performance car and says, OK, I'm going to prove to you guys that I can make a car at one quarter the price of that Lamborghini that's going to be running on electricity, no gasoline, electricity, and go faster. We're going to do that. So we got challenged to a drag race. Now, this is what I want you to notice on this also when you listen to the guy driving the Tesla, listen for the motor because you don't hear it. They're quiet. They don't go. Bah! No, they're quiet. Listen, OK, here's a, here's a fun race between these two. Keep in mind also, this is a professionally run race on a professional track. OK, these are not people out playing. They're actually putting these cars to the test. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, I've got a good start there. Oh, traction! Come on, Tesla. Yes, I've got it! 
His car didn't launch as well as it should have done. Gaining on him though. It's coming back now though. Come on, catch him at the end. Victory. And now braking and regenerating energy back into the battery and just enjoying the victory at the same time. All right, so that was a pretty good show right there. Uh, he did beat him off the line, as you could saw. Uh, you could see that Tesla didn't look like a gigantic sports car that could beat a Lamborghini, but it did. Finally, the last part of transportation we're look at is a biggie. We can now, with the transportation we have, pretty much get anywhere on the Earth we want to go, and we're concentrating more now on getting off the Earth and where we want to go. There are four major government corporations that are working on this and had for quite a while. NASA, Roscosmos for the, the Russian cosmonauts, the European Space Agency, and the Chinese National Space Agency or Association. Uh, there are four biggies that are out there that are working on things right now, whether it was a Saturn V, the most powerful rocket to ever be launched, uh, which then led to the, of course, the moon landing and the creation of the space shuttle. Uh, the space shuttle was critical for filling up our atmosphere, our, our upper atmosphere, with satellites. Do you like the GPS on your phone? Do you like using your cell phone? Do you like communicating and getting your cable signals? This is all satellites, kids. Do you like your Google Earth? satellites. So the space shuttle was crucial in getting some of these uh, communication devices up there in space. So what a way to transport stuff in the space shuttle. Uh, the Russians, while the Americans were landing on the moon, they mastered the art of living in space. They have the Russian Soyuz rocket and created things like the Mir space station. And uh, they still are pretty much the best uh, at knowing how to live in space. Um, after a while, we got together uh, we, meaning countries around the world, and made one of the greatest things ever, the International Space Station. International, meaning Canada, United States, Russia, the European Space Agency, Chinese, Japanese, all these people, we all work together on the building and maintenance of the International Space Station. Oh, look how it's powered. Solar panels. Isn't that amazing? You can bet there's not an internal combustion engine on that puppy. Uh-uh. It's all electric, and they all get it from the sun. So lots of batteries, too, of course, to hold electricity from the sun. Uh, but, yeah, that that is the most amazing thing. And it does apply to transportation because we're using this to learn how to live in space so we can transport ourselves even farther away. One big development we're going to finish up with here, though, is... Private companies, I mean private, the four you just saw were run by governments. There are people out there that have lots of money. And they decide, you know what? NASA, Roscosmos, the Europeans, they're all doing good, but you know, what if I want to build something that goes into space? What if I want to do that? So on the top left, you see Virgin Atlantic, which is run by Richard Branson. You see Blue Origin, which is run by Jeff Bezos. Both are looking to bring people into space. And then, of course, we come along again with Elon Musk, who made SpaceX. SpaceX turned the entire world of, of space travel upside down. He came in and he was actually quite successful in getting things launched, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, and here's one of the ways he did it. He did it with his Falcon 9 rocket. This is what it looks like. There's nine engines in the bottom that's pushing up. That's where the name came from. This was quick and reliable and he finally said one more thing I want to do I don't know if you kids know but if that giant Saturn V rocket those Soyuz rockets when those launch we lose them they're destroyed they fall back to earth we don't collect them they're gone the only thing that used to come back to earth was a space shuttle because there's people on it but they can launch that gigantic Saturn V and a little tiny capsule holding people is all that comes back same with the Soyuz rockets. We were wasting so much. You would waste the entire rocket. Can you imagine flying on a plane and every time an airline used a plane, they just threw it away when they were done? Every single flight. So Elon Musk said, no, 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 no. I'm going to find out a way that we're going to launch stuff into space and we're going to bring the rockets back and we're going to use them again. And around the world, everyone said, no, can't be done. Why? Because no one else has done it. They could have done it, but they didn't do it because it can't be done. 
Well, he decided to give it a try. And after many, many attempts, I'd like you to watch. This is going to be the launch of the Falcon Heavy rocket. It is three Falcon 9s, a big one in the middle, two on the side. So a total of 29 uh, rocket engines pushing it up. And watch what happens at the end. Nine, eight, side booster ignition. Six, five, four. This is the second three, most powerful rocket two, ever launched. There are no people on it. It's a test flight. And as you can see, it worked. Second most powerful rocket ever sent into space. And Elon says, yeah, this is great and all, but you see those boosters in the side and holding? I want them back. So what you see now is those pieces of the rocket coming back to Earth. Just watch. And that landing burn has started. Both boosters looking to be on track towards their respective landing zones. Boosters landing legs have started. Side boosters landing legs have deployed. Oh, come on. Goosebumps. Absolutely. Revolutionized everything. And so with that, Elon Musk changed the world of space travel. He is now making things that can come back to Earth. And so with that, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> what did he send up in the space? This. This is not the transportation we were intending to, to use. Uh, but he had to put something in there to represent a payload he was bringing to space. And he wasn't bringing people because that was a test flight. So he brought up a Tesla car with a person inside it. And there's a circuitry in the car. I'm not making this up. That's not science fiction. Those rockets really did land themselves after being launched. And there really was a Tesla car. And there is a Tesla car floating through space. Thank you, Elon. Well... That's the next proper step, wouldn't it be? Mars? How's that for transportation? How's that for an advance in our fundamental needs? Do we need to go to Mars? Not yet, but there's a time when the Earth might be full of people and we might want to reach other planets and go to other places to live. So no, right now we don't need to, but there may come a day and, uh, and transportation to other planets may become a fundamental need. So kids, we're at 2020 and we got a long way to go. And there were some pretty far out ideas that just passed by you, but they're definitely trends that will be continuing throughout your life. Energy efficiency, renewable energy, uh, traveling off the earth, it's all gonna be happening with you. So have a good time, enjoy yourselves, and um, and let's see, maybe you can watch this video in another 40 or 50 years from now and go, wow, Mr. Fry got it right, or wow, Mr. Fry got it wrong. That could be fun either way. And, and I couldn't let you go without just one more performance by Tesla. Watch this. Tires are just so cold, no traction at all. Would you like another go? I need another shot just to make it a bit more I've got this launch control method though. Left foot on the brake. Dab the accelerator, I'll turn on launch control. Yeah, stop talking so my tyres can get colder. Yeah. And then make sure you time it just right when you feel the throttle and then lift off the brake. <laughs> Come on, race! Can he win <laughs> twice in a row? <laughs> He's getting agitated. Oh, he's got a better start than me then. Come on, baby! Come on, Tesla! Oh, wow, he's quick. Now he's coming back. Can I hold it? Come on! Come on! Goodbye, kids. Hope you enjoyed it.